job here is to merely present the context that says that there is no question that the entirety of what we've been through over the last four years has been merely an orchestration to assault the liberties of people here in this country and around the world. That is, the evidence starts here in the UK in 1966. Your own Welcome Trust was the one who decided to fund the coronavirus as the preferred form of human manipulation in 1966. It was one year later that the United States and the UK got into an agreement that said that we were going to modify and manipulate coronavirus to see what could be done to infect, quote, a healthy population, end quote. That was 1967, the year of my birth. And in 2011, in the document that is imaged on the left, which unfortunately, given the size of the screen, is pretty much illegible, but you can go find it, a antitrust collusion, and I'm using that term quite literally, between the Wellcome Trust, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Gates Foundation, NIAID, and the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, got together and established a mandate that said that by 2020, the world would accept, and I quote, a universal vaccine, end quote. By 2015, we had the public statement, and I need to read this into the record. To sustain the funding base beyond the crisis, we need to increase the public understanding of the need for medical countermeasures, such as a pan-influenza or pan-coronavirus vaccine. Let me pause for a moment. When this statement was made, the World Health Organization had officially declared coronavirus a eradicated disease. In what world do we need a vaccine for a disease that the World Health Organization in its own infinite wisdom had declared eradicated? driver is the media, and the economics will follow the hype. We need to use that hype to our advantage to get to the real issues. Investors will respond if they see profit at the end of the process. The announcement, and I'm quoting, that the Wuhan Institute of Virology Virus 1 was, and I quote, poised for human emergence. End quote. That was 2016. That's the proceedings of the National Academy of Science first patent in 2002, filed on the synthetic chimeric <coughs> coronavirus, which, as I've said in many instances, was actually patented to be infectious and replication defective. What that means is it was actually weaponized. That's not an allegation, that's a statement of fact, because in 2000 hearing, it has been the World Health Organization's collusion since the MRC in this country was founded by the Wellcome Trust. And since in the United States, the Rockefeller Foundation functionally funded what we now call the CDC, which back then was the Malaria Prevention Program. But we must actually deal with it in this chamber and point out that none other than Eliza Manningham, who was the head of the Welcome Trust Board of Trustees, who happened at the same time to be the head of MI5, was the one who sat at the helm of COVID when the September 19th launch of this campaign began. You cannot escape the fact that MI5 was directly involved in the premeditation and distribution of this particular campaign of terror. And stop pretending that we have to ask a question of why. That's a nonsense question. In the 1980s, we conveniently had the HIV pandemic. Sort of 2001, we all pretend that we know what happened with the towers on the 11th, but we all forget what happened on the 28th which is when the Defense Department, from their bioweapons program, released anthrax. And four short years later, we had the PREP Act. 